About to leave, already packing. Come with me, I'm not really asking. We'll get away to a place where we don't know. About to see the world in action. What we can be, life with no distractions. We'll get away, this is what we waited for. By a whole grade. By a whole grade. My teacher isn't just Mr. Maddock. It's a whole teaching team made up of James, Mike, and Marta. My classroom's all about doing and applying. My day standing at the front of the classroom with a PowerPoint are long gone. I master every concept by learning at my own pace. I spend 100% of my class time interacting and supporting individual students. I move on only when the moment is right for me, not the whole class. I know what each and every student is mastering and struggling on at every moment. I know exactly what I need to learn next, and I can go back and review material at any time. I spend my teaching time supporting and inspiring, not planning, delivering and marking. I can learn from anywhere at any time. I can switch off when school closes, knowing they are learning from the best. My teacher has my homework marked before I get to class. I set every piece of homework at the start of the year. I'm two weeks ahead of my expected progress. I can track everyone's progress with a swipe of a finger. I can track my own progress and set my own targets. I now have time to focus on developing the skills of every learner in my classroom. I know exactly what it means to explain, evaluate and analyse and I'm not afraid of any exam. My lessons are now far more about the skills and the application, not just the content itself. I've completely remodelled what it means to be a teacher in my classroom. Hola, hola, hola. Buenas tardes. Bienvenidos a la cuarta, cuarta sesión de revisión para los um, GCSEs de este año. Hoy es martes uh, 26 de abril, es la una de la tarde y bienvenidos. Yo soy Marta, con nosotros tenemos a James. Hola, James. Hola. Hola, James está en los controles. Sí, sí. Está controlando el, el streaming uh -huh. uh, y está controlando que todo suceda bien. 
Y en casa, al cargo de las redes sociales, tenemos a Mike. Hola, Mike. Um, Mike no está aquí, está en casa. Pero nos irá mandando información. Bueno, hoy la revisión trata de dos cosas. Uno, el tiempo libre. El tiempo libre. Y dos, los negativos. ¿Ok? El tiempo libre. Free time is a massive, massive issue, is a massive topic. There's so much information, there's so much vocabulary that, you know, it, 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 you will spend a, a, quite a bit of your revision time going through uh, free time. And so you should. OK, so in this session, what I'm going to try to do is give you a few snippets, a few reminders, a few, um, you know, a, a bit of a guidance and a bit of, of a few reminders of what are the most important, what was the most important vocabulary and the most important areas you should be looking into. And then in the second, um, in the second part of the session, we're going to be looking at negatives. Um, and I'll tell you a little bit more about negatives um, later on. So uh, just before we start with the uh, free time, just a few reminders. First of all, primero, las notas. Okay, make sure you've got your revision notes with you. If you haven't got them, quick, 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 click on this link be below me um, and get them printed off and get them ready for when we start with a session. Remember, with, with the notes, of course, you can take it. It's a basis for you to take your own notes, but also there are practice questions for you to um, crack on after the session. Segundo, suscríbete, suscríbete a YouTube. Suscríbete. Click here subscribe and activate notifications okay this way we make a much better the ever learner community and we provide you with a much better service y tercero contáctanos contáctanos get in touch with us so please do uh, complete our interactive question today's interactive question is a reading comprehension question james are you showing um our viewers how they can do this Yes, yeah, so what, what you guys need to do is you need to go to theeverlearner.com up here. This is our platform. Have a look around as well, but most importantly, click on News. And on News, you're going to see here, you've got a very simple way to click on Interactive Questions. And we've stuck the Spanish all the way down the bottom. That's all a little bit disappointing. Down. But here we've got Session 4. We've got Session 4 on Free Time. If you click on here, it's going to take us into this Google form, and you can submit your responses to our questions. So we urge you, please, to do that go and get involved i'm not totally sure what alex done is done but let's say he likes that and so on and i can submit the answers down here okay so so do get yourselves onto that folks um one of the things i was going to say on that one is that we're looking to publish some really high quality answers in the coming days early next week we're going to be starting to put some of these answers back out to the community so it's more and more important that you put your answers in so please do do that we've put them there you guys need to respond to that teachers out there um Get your students busy, get them interacting, get them submitting questions, get us doing a bit of marking for them and we'll send it back to them and then you can obviously discuss it with them as well. Muchas gracias. Excelente. Uh, so this is our one way of uh, interacting with us. Second way of interacting with us. Please do send us via Twitter or Instagram your pictures of what you're doing while you have a rest during your revision. Okay, so please hashtag almohadilla, almohadilla, revision break. Okay, we will receive those pictures and we will reward the best ones. So just you don't have to appear in the picture. Just, you know, just show us your setting show us how make sure there's something spanish related on there um so that you know we will probably like it a bit more okay so you've got more chances of of uh, of being the person who receives a student pack of the roadmap and um that's it oh and also of course through those channels through twitter through instagram through facebook if you have any questions related to the the what we're doing in the session please also do let us know okay we'll be happy to answer any any questions you've got of course session related and of course we do receive comments via the youtube comments as uh, below as well so we've yes. had numerous many of you are contacting us that way do feel free to do that if your question is a gen if your point is a genuine one a question an observation a request we guarantee we will answer you and we will give the answer that you're looking for if we are humanly capable of doing so we so we will interact with you so do post your comments there and we look forward to receiving the good ones mm -hmm. muchas gracias james okay so 
let's crack on with the first part of this session, El Tiempo Libre, free time. Just a quick reminder, remember you may need to adjust the volume levels. And I'm sorry if you're hearing a bit of a strange noise. My tummy is really rumbling. I can, you know, it is lunchtime for everyone. I, hadn't had, I haven't had my lunch yet. So if you, every now and again, you hear some strange rumbling, it's not, there's nothing wrong with your computer. There's nothing wrong with your headphones. It's my tummy, all right? That microphone may be too close to your abdomen, given this. Yeah, maybe, maybe I need to put it a <laughs> no, bit the one, on, the one on your on there oh this one yeah, yeah i know okay so yeah just a quick change of microphone so adjust the volume levels if you need to and uh yeah let's crack on with this Vale, pues vamos a hablar de el tiempo libre vamos a hablar del tiempo libre um, una palabra importante es los pasatiempos los pasatiempos, hobbies in español, los pasatiempos, ¿vale? Uh, before we start talking about the different free time um, activities, something really important to remember, words like frequen uh, frequency words, okay? Um, when you talk, when you, if you ask to write about free time, you're going to be asked, you know, what do you do in your free time? So, so really, if you say, I play football, or you know it's it's not that interesting but add a detail say one do you do when do you do it often do you do it rarely do you do it always okay so words like for example a menudo often de vez en cuando um from time to time uh, a veces sometimes siempre always Nunca, um, never, rara vez, rarely, okay? Normalmente, normalmente, usually, okay? So these words are going to be very important. If you want to give more detail, you could always say, for example, tres veces, tres veces por semana, three times a week, o tres veces al mes three times a month, or tres veces al año, three times a year. Okay, so really important to add more detail, use those um, frequency expressions. Okay, now uh, the first thing we're going to look at within El Tiempo Libre son los deportes, los deportes, sport, los deportes. Two verbs I need to know. The first one, jugar. Okay, jugar, to play. And what forms I especially need to know? Juego, I play. Jugaba, I used to play. Jugué, I played. Jugaré, I will play. Okay, of course, do feel free to learn all the forms, but especially these four forms you need to know. Um, and what sort of thing could I say? Okay, so I could say, de vez en cuando, Juego al baloncesto. De vez en cuando juego al baloncesto, basketball. Juego al billar. I play billiards, a pool. Juego a la pelota. I play pelota, a game uh, like a, a bit similar to real tennis uh, played with the hand. So ball against the wall. Uh, very popular in the north of, of Spain. Juego al Balón mano, handball, juego al tenis de mesa, I play um, table tennis. Of course there are many other sports, but notice I'm giving you here some of the sports that you may play and that are not cognates um, with English, so, so they're not that, that, that similar or completely the same as in English. So you could say for example juego al rugby. Okay, but when you're writing it, rugby is spelled like rugby, so it's not going to show, it's not going to let you showcase everything, you know, or look at what amazing Spanish I know, okay? So, rugby, el fútbol, notice, of course, fútbol spelled like this in Spanish. Um, um, I don't know, el badminton. So, many, many other sports that you play are more similar. So, if you want to show off, I would advise you choose something that, that is not as similar to English, okay? So this is as far as jugar, as far as the, um, the, the 
sports that are basically, in essence, games uh, or that you play with balls um, is, is concerned. Okay, And that's why we play jugar. That's why we, we use jugar to play. But of course, there's another verb that we use in Spanish to talk about sports, which is hacer. Okay, hacer means to do. And this is the verb that I'm going to use with um, the rest of sports. So sports that you do, sports that you don't play. And what forms do I need to know from hacer? Well, the most important are going to be hago, I do. Hice, I did. Hacía, I used to do. And haré, I will do. Okay, and what sports am I going to use this with? Well, sports that I would say hago with or hice are, well, many. So let's look at those that are maybe, again, more dissimilar to Spanish. So hago, for example, escalada. Okay, and notice I'm going to be putting the article here, okay, so that you know you know whether it's masculine or feminine. But when I say the sentence, I'm not going to be using this, okay? So here, for example, is juego al baloncesto. I do use the al, but here I would say hago escalada without this, okay? So la escala, hago escalada, hago, uh, hago boxeo, hago... Artes marciales, martial arts. Hago salto, salto con paracaídas, free diving. Hago esquí acuático, esquí acuático, water ski. Hago, uh, sorry about that, tiro con arco. O hago esgrima. Tiro con arco is archery. Esgrima is fencing. Okay. There are others. There is um, things like vela, la vela. Um, and then there are others that, you know, the, the, uh, sorry. Um, there are others like, for example, la hago natación. Hago, so that you will probably definitely know. Uh, no esquí. Hago e Aquí, equitación o hago um, ciclismo. Now, these last three are very important. Why? Because these three are probably the prime candidates for um, the exam to not use directly. So, for example, if I do swimming, I could say hago natación or I could also say nado, I swim or voy a la piscina. So there are ways around them that would avoid using this word, okay? So if you're going to find a trick question where they want you to guess what sport it is, these three are probably prime candidates. So natación, because you can say this in, you can say, express it in these, in these other ways. Equitación, I could say monto a caballo. I ride a horse and ciclismo I could say monto en bicicleta okay I ride on my bike of course many other sports you can say in a, in a roundabout way but these three are prime candidates other than these three the other thing you may find in exams are expressions like um, los deportes los deportes de riesgo o de aventura. So risk or adventure sports. So things like uh, puenting, bungee jumping. O el salto con paracaídas. O el rafting. Okay. These are sports, uh, adventure sports. So you may find them mentioned like this. Or you may find them referred to as los deportes de aventura. Another another one of another case is, for example, los deportes, los deportes de invierno, los deportes de invierno, things like el esquí, el snowboard, okay, um, all winter sports, okay, deportes de invierno, may be referred directly or may be referred under deportes de invierno. And the same happens with things like los deportes, los deportes 
acuáticos. ¿Ok? Water sports. So, la natación, el esquí acuático. ¿Ok? They could be referred as los deportes acuáticos. ¿Ok? Uh, other than that, also remember to... I'm not going to go through it because of time, but do remember to go through any vocabulary that is related. If you're going to talk about the sport, you do. Any other vocabulary that might be related to the, that sport. So, things like, for example, el balón, the ball, uh, el campeonato, the championship. Um, el, um, el partido, the match, um, los jugadores, the players, okay? So have a look and do, a, and do bring in more detail, okay? Juego al fútbol is boring, okay? But if you say normalmente juego al fútbol um, los sábados por la mañana, juego en un campeonato donde hay muchos jugadores okay you can make it interesting and you can expand into it and then it will be interesting okay so think about it so what other things can we talk about when we are talking about our free time el cine el cine o la tele uh, ah I'm having a nightmare with this la televisión el cine o la Televisión. What verb is going to be important here? The verb ver, to see or watch. And what forms am I going to need? Especially veo, I watch. Veía, I used to watch. Be, I watched. And veré, I will watch. And what will we watch? It will depend on whether it's TV or cinema. If I'm watching TV, la tele, okay? La tele, notice in Spanish, we don't do this abbreviation for TV. We don't write TV. Okay, um, so ver, veo, what could I say? Veo un programa, a program, un programa de televisión. Veo un concurso, a quiz or a contest. Un documental, I could say un documental de animales, for example, o un documental histórico, a history uh, documentary. Veo dibujos... Dibujos animados, cartoons, dibujos animados, veo una serie o series, veo una telenovela, soap, we can also refer to uh, this as un culebrón, un culebrón is a long, you know, long lasting soap, or I could say veo las noticias, the news, las noticias. There are other types of, uh, of programs, but these for now will do. Uh, if we move from la tele and we go to el cine, el cine, what have I got? What can I watch um, in the cinema? ¿Qué veo en el cine? Pues puedo decir que veo en el cine, el cine veo una película, una película de aventuras. An adventure film, una película de aventuras, o de fantasía, o de dibujos animados, as well, o una película, uh, sorry, una película romántica, romántica, o de terror, it's not horror, by the way, de terror, una película de ciencia, ciencia ficción, o una película del oeste, for example. Okay? And I could also talk about un drama, a drama, o una comedia. Okay? So many different types of, um, of films uh, that we could watch. Now, within the topic of cinema, don't forget as well that it's not all about just the films, it's also about other things like words, vocabulary related to the world of cinema, like who takes part in it or what happens when we go to the cinema. So words like el actor o la actriz o el o la artista. Um, words like, for example, el papel el papel, literally the paper, but this is the word we give to the role, okay? If an actor plays a role, we talk about el papel. And in this case, it, while in English you say to play a role, in Spanish we talk about interpretar. Interpretar un papel, to interpret a role, okay? 
So if you if you were, if you wanted to write like a little film review, so you would need probably this word to say who plays that role, interpretar, not jugar. Um, and if you go to the cinema, you may also learn, uh, need words like, for example, la taquilla, the word, the box office, or la butaca for the um, the seat where you sit in the in the cinema. Okay, and of course there are many other there are many other words that uh, are related to this. Do look into it. Okay, but this should get you started. If we swiftly move to the um, other thing that we can do in our free time, which is música, la música. ¿Qué hacemos con la música? Con la música puedo escuchar, escuchar música. Okay, so if I'm going to say talk about listening to music, I could use this verb as in the present, escucho, I listen. I could say escucho. Chava, I used to listen. I could talk about a, a music genre that I used to listen and I don't listen to anymore. I could talk about, I could say, escuché. I listened to something, like I listened to that song yesterday. Or escucharé, if I'm going to listen to something. Okay, so um, interesting, you know, what things could I say, escu um, escuchar? So different uh, music genres. The good thing about music genres is that most of them are, are exactly the same as um, as in English. So I've got la música, la música clásica. It's probably one of the ones that is a bit more further away, believe it or not. Um, o la música alternativa. Uh, o la música folclórica, folk, folkloric music, but I could talk about el pop, el rock, el hip hop, notice hip hop, uh, el rap, okay, and any other any other genre, they they've got basically the same name. You just you know. Basically, you just they tend to be masculine genre, other than if you say la música and then the adjective. Okay. Um, other things that you can do with music, of course, you can listen to it or you can play it. Now, be careful because in Spanish we don't use the verb tocar to play music. We use the verb. Um, sorry, <laughs> we do use the verb tocar. I wanted to say we don't use the verb jugar. Okay. Uh, we don't play music. We touch music. So we use the verb tocar. So I could say toco, which is literally I touch, but this is for I play. Tocaba, I used to play. Toque, I played. Let's say I want to say I played in a concert yesterday. I would use toque. And tocaré, I will play. And what would I say these with? So different instruments. Now, again, lucky thing. Many instruments are cognates, el piano, el violín, um, but some that are not com not uh, not so close. La batería, toco la batería, the drums, toco la flauta, close but not exact, flute, uh, toco el teclado. By the way, flauta is also recorder. Okay, I play the recorder or the flute. You, you can specify, but la flauta will, will do for both. Teclado, the keyboard. Um, these are the main, um, yeah, the, the main instruments that would be a little bit furthest away. Then we've got things like, for example, sorry, like um, el clarinete, la trompeta. So they are similar. Okay, they're not exact, but they are similar to English. And of course, um, other verbs related to it is related to music is also words like descargar. Okay, descargar to download. Maybe nowadays fewer and fewer people download music because we just tend to, to listen to it on streaming. Um, but still, we can say descargo música. I download music. Descargué. I downloaded, descargaba, I used to download, and descargade, I will download music, okay? And then other words, uh, just to finish this topic in, on music, other words related to the world of music, just remember, you know, again, the people involved in it. So people like el o la cantante, el músico, 
ok, el músico, la música, el músico. Um, what's like él o la guitarrista, guitarist, él o la bajista, the bassist, uh, él o la batería, the person, the drummer, ok, so if you want to be precise when you talk about music, these are words that you can talk, you can use on that. And then to finish with this topic, we've got all the activities, ok, otros, otros pasatiempos, otros pasatiempos, so what else can we do in our free time if we're not doing any of these things? So I could say things like, for example, juego al ajedrez, chess, juego al ajedrez, o juego a los videojuegos, juego a los videojuegos, uh, video games, o juego a juegos, games, de mesa, literally games of table, board games. Or we could say, of course, of course, voy de compras. I go shopping. Voy a la discoteca. I go clubbing. Uh, salgo con amigos. We know all of these, don't we? Salgo con amigos. Um, but then there are other um, other activities that some, some of you may do. Like, for example, hago... Bricolaje, I do DIY. O colecciono, I collect. Colecciono, I don't know. Uh, sellos, I collect stamps. O me gusta, I could say, me gusta la lectura. I like reading, important um, word. O la escritura, I like writing. Okay? So really, really important words. Before we finish, before I finish, uh, very, very quick, a nice expression that I like. Um, it's this, it's the word, oh, I don't know what I've done now. Uh, is the word disfruto, disfruto followed by gerund, okay? So um, especially if you're doing higher, I would really encourage you to use this. So for example, um, in this case, uh, coleccionar, okay? Coleccionar. I would add ando instead of the AR, and I could say disfruto coleccionando sellos, okay? Disfruto coleccionando. So um, this is a, a bit of a step up from, you know, from some of the expressions like me gusta, no me gusta. Okay, but if you're doing especially higher, do look at those more complex ways of expressing likes or dislikes, okay? Um, so yes, yeah, like for example, uh, if I wanted to say I, I enjoy writing, I could say disfruto, disfruto escribiendo, okay? And it would be this yendo ending because the verb is escribir. Okay, I'm not going to say much more about it. If you, you know, if you've seen this, fantastic. If you haven't and are interested, uh, please do ask your teacher. Um, you know, I, I don't, I don't want to get make this too too long. But do ask your teacher and see. You will see that it's very very easy. Okay, you just need this ando or the yendo for um, er and ir verbs, and uh, and yeah. And that's, that's it for now, okay? So do get looking and using and describing all these um, free time activities and especially make it really, really interesting, okay? Vale, hasta ahora.
Bienvenidos de nuevo. Wow, this was a bit of a long first little session and I could have been going on and on and on for quite a while longer. Just don't encourage me because um, I, I do have that in my locker. Um, while uh, while the, the little pause was on, I thought, I realized there were two more types. You, you know the, the list of, of types of sport I mentioned, the uh, los, las, los deportes acuáticos, los deportes de aventuras, los deportes de invierno. I mentioned there were two, that there are two other groups of sports that you may want to mention, you may want to use. One of them is los deportes de equipo. Okay, remember the word equipo, team. So, um, for example, deportes de equipo, el rugby, el fútbol, el netball. You could use that. For example, say you really want to do football. You, 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 sorry, you really like football. But, you know, admittedly, saying something like me gusta el fútbol is, is on the boring side of things. Now, you could still say that you like playing football, but you could make the sentence even better. You could say, for example, me gustan los deportes de equipo, como el fútbol. For example, so what are you doing there? A, you're showing that you can use me gustan before a plural noun, before a, a more than one thing. Yeah, so that shows that actually your Spanish is rather good. And two, you're showing that your range of vocabulary is, re is, is actually really good. Los deportes de equipo. It sounds good. Um, and then you can get away with using a bit of, a, you know, el fútbol, a cognate, something that is not going to be valued enormously. Okay. So, so just think about about this sort of thing, and the other, yeah, the other group of of, uh, of sports. You, we've got on the one hand los deportes de equipo, on the other hand we've got los deportes individuales, como el esgrima, la natación, uh, la equitación. Yeah, so all those sports that a person would do on their own son los deportes individuales. So think about this when you're writing, okay? And of course, also consider it meant for things like listening or, or, or reading. Um, so, James, hmm. any any questions? Well, you kind of already just answered the big question I had because... Actually, you, James, you want to come around and... Let me, um, let me come around. So that we can all, all yeah. see you, not just hear a, a This voice. will be a treat for yeah, everyone, maybe we can, right? Yeah, we can use this, this microphone. Let's... Uh, you can also sing as a song if you really want to, but, um, you know. Right, you, Do you want to sit on my lap? <laughs> you, you don't really that want way. the singing, that, that's for sure. But, um, <laughs> yeah, okay, so my, my question really was going to be about, you mentioned numerous times there this sort of notion of interesting and boring, and I think you've already given hmm. a few details there. In, term, in your opinion, from the teacher's perspective, potentially from the examiner's perspective, what do you consider to be the things that mark out a more interesting answer to a more boring one? I, I get completely... Uh, juego al fútbol is quite boring and, and it's very very predictable so what marks out a more interesting answer for you hmm. so I, w I would say this on the one hand there is there is the the, the, the sort of boringness might be in the context uh, sorry in in the content so you know sports activities that people do like go, you know that, that that lots of people do and lots of people would talk about like yeah playing football going shopping uh, you know that sort of thing mm, it, it, when 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 the examiner reads it imagine in your in your in your writing paper um when the examiner reads it they're not going to go you know they're not going to go wow this person has written sorry this okay. person has written they go shopping you know it's not going to have it's not going to have that wow factor so that would be in, on the terms, even though ir de compras, it's, it's very far away from the English, so, you know, on, on that side. Okay, so, so on the one hand is, is content that many people would write about. On the other hand is also cognates, words that look, ver look or, or may sound or look very much like the English. So that's why things like football, you know, if you can choose baloncesto, basketball, rather than football, that's going to make it more interesting because it's further away. So you're, cho you're showing that your command of Spanish, you're showing off a little bit more your command of Spanish. And then if you're writing and you're saying that you do, I don't know, tiro, tiro con arco, archery, Mm, that's going to be a little bit. Oh, that's different. Okay, so just if you, sometimes I think you you may need to put yourself in the skin of an examiner who's going to be reading hundreds of essays or of, of or of ninety or one hundred and fifty word little little writings about free time. Just think how many times that person is going to have seen juego al fútbol or me gusta jugar al fútbol. So they're not, you know, they're not going to be throwing what's it called um, um, fireworks Are you when, when they read. Are encouraging the students to lie? 
Oh, yes, totally. <laughs> totally. I, I've always in- perhaps encouraged... More, perhaps more importantly, encouraging students to write interesting things. Exactly. I, I've always encouraged my students to lie through their teeth as long as it's feasible okay so you don't want to say uh i don't know in I my free water exactly or in my free time I, t- I get a rocket and i go to the moon of course that's not going to be however you know however fancy you make it that's going to sound um, nobody's going to believe that okay but um but otherwise um yeah just uh you know just just lie feel free nobody's going to check okay nobody's going to knock on your door and check oh sorry I, can i check that you do fencing okay nobody's going to do that okay mm-hmm. Any other questions? Uh, I wanted to have a little go. Uh-huh, okay. <laughs> so, James, si te pregunto, ¿qué haces en tu tiempo libre? Uh, entonces, before I do this, I know there's <laughs> Spanish teachers, listen, just re- let me remind you, I'm not a Spanish teacher and I've never spent a single minute studying Spanish in my entire life. So, I'm simply trying to replicate the need to have a go at things and to practice here. So, please, please don't judge me for that, okay? <sighs> oh, so, James, ¿qué haces en tu tiempo libre? Entonces, me gustan mucho al, a los deportes um, de equipo mm-hmm. y específicamente el fútbol. Um, antes um, uh, jug, uh, jugaba el fútbol, pero en, es, en estos años soy un entrenador de, de, de un equipo de, de fútbol mm-hmm. por... A adultos por pa- para de, de, de adultos de, de adultos uh-huh. de, de, de hombres uh-huh. y bueno eso y también y también uh, me, gust, me gusta mucho leer pero normalmente no um, no encuentro los momentos que necesito por hacer eso a, 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 al tiempo por, por relajar y por leer las las cosas que, que me, um, um, me gustaría leer mm-hmm, muy y, bien pero específicamente um, uh, leo um, la, la historia mm-hmm. y específicamente específicamente um, leo uh, leo libros sobre la tema el tema el tema el tema de uh, historia de arqueologi- arqueología arqueología muy y bien la historia de la gente de la gente historia de la gente en uh-huh. general no no me gusta tanto la historia de, de, de reyes y reinas y todo eso y, y, y todo eso es, es muy 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 típico típico de, 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 las li, de los libros de historia y yo, yo no tengo mucho mucho interés de, de eso ok muy bien vale james um if you know any of you out there um if you can send me a little summary of what james enjoys doing what he used to do before and what he enjoys doing now um all the different activities and why he enjoys it we might send something your way because that's going to be impressive okay so uh James, if there isn't, if there aren't any mm-hmm. other questions, shall we? Probably it's a good idea to move on to the second part. Yeah, time-wise, we need to move on. Yes. I, I was banging on a bit. You too were much banging there. on, yes, yeah, totally. Yeah. I get it. Um, so this is going to be on negatives, okay? And I hope you understand through what I'm going to explain you now. So I'm, I'll, I'll tell you as well why I think do, being good at negatives is so 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 important. Okay, so let's crack on with it, and uh, yeah, let's go. Vale, the negative. Um, why do I personally think the negative is important? Okay, um, let me move this a little bit. It's a little bit, little bit off center. Um, so why do I think it's important? Right, I personally think it's uh, the negative or, or being good at the negative is important for two reasons. One reason, reason number one, is for your listening and reading um, activities and, of course, exams. So, uh, if you hear, for example, the expression, I don't know, voy a la piscina, you will think, oh, this person goes to the swimming pool. But, of course, you will be mistaken if you don't hear the negative before. So, no voy a la piscina or nunca voy a la piscina. I never go to the swimming pool, okay? So, really important to be really tuned into these sort of expressions that can change completely the meaning of what you just heard. And the second reason is for writing, okay, for your writing or also could be for your speaking. And it's that 
being able to say what you don't do, what you've never done, what, um, you know, what you didn't see, what, okay. Being able to say the negative, being able to use the negative or negative sentences makes um, your writing and your speaking more interesting. Okay, because, um, you know, let's face it, many of us lead pretty boring lives. So, of course, if we, all, if we can only talk and write about what we do do, it would be pretty boring. Now, once we start writing about what we don't do or never do or haven't done, then things become a little bit more interesting. So, let's have a look at what are these negative expressions, these negative expressions that we must know, okay? Now, the first one, the king or queen of negative expressions is no, okay? No. And no, one thing that we need to remember is that it always appears before the verb. So, how do we use no? Okay, so I can say voy a la piscina, okay? I can say voy a la piscina, I go to the swimming pool, if I want to make this negative, because the verb is here, I'll say no, no voy a la piscina. I could say María juega al baloncesto, María juega al baloncesto. Maria plays basketball. If I want to make it more interesting, Maria no juega al baloncesto because the verb is here. Okay? Um, I could say mi primo es alto. My cousin is tall. If I want to make it more interesting, I could say mi primo no es alto because this is the verb. In this case, in the case of um, uh, what is called descriptions, it's a very common thing to say, for example, instead of, you know, in this case, I could say mi primo no es alto, which would mean the same as mi primo es bajo, my cousin is short, okay? But it, this is a bit of a more interesting sentence than this one because it contains a negative, okay? So this first expression, no, is probably the most important one. Okay, and it's and can you see it's super easy to use, so no, um, no, no excuses at all. The other expression that is very good is ni, ni. Okay, so two knees, um, yeah, separated by a phrase or a, or a noun. And what is this ni? Ni ni is basically the equivalent of neither, no. Okay, neither, no. So. What do I mean by this? So I could have a sentence like, for example, uh, pa -pa -pam, me gustan, me gustan las manzanas y las peras. Me gustan las manzanas y las peras. I like apples and pears. Okay, fine. This is a normal statement. No negatives involved. Now, what involved? What would happen if I actually didn't like either of them. Okay, so in that case, I need first, I need the negative no, okay, in front of the verb. In this case, this we're going to consider this the verb. And then I'm going to have one ni in front of the first thing that I don't like, and ni in front of the second thing that I don't like. So I'll say no me gustan ni las manzanas, and then I'll replace this e and for ni ni las peras, okay? No me gustan ni las manzanas ni las peras, okay? Um, another another example, I, I could, another thing I could say. I could say, um, let's say that yesterday I, yesterday I worked and I read, okay? So I could say, ayer leí uh, y Trabajé. Ayer leí y trabajé. But, so this would be yesterday I read and 
I worked. Now, if I wanted to say that yesterday I didn't read and I didn't work, then I could say ayer ni leí ni trabajé. Okay? In this case, because what this ni is in front of a verb, okay, leí, trabajé, we don't need the no. Okay? It's, it's already um, sort of understood. Okay? Uh, but let's have one last example. So if I wanted to say, um, let's say this sentence, tengo un perro y un gato. Okay? I have a dog and a cat. If I want to say I haven't got a dog or a cat, then I would say no tengo, of course this T would be little, ni un perro, ni un gato. Okay, so do remember, I need the no in front of the verb. When this ni happens to be in front, so when I'm saying that there are, when I'm when I'm um, saying, uh, like in this case where, where I've got what I'm negating, the two things are verbs, then I don't need it. But otherwise, I do need this no. Okay, so no tengo ni un perro ni un gato. Okay, now, uh, what other things have I got? What other negative expressions have I got? Okay, the next one I'm going to look at is tampoco. Tampoco, which is a bit, it's again, it's a little bit like a neither, but after, after a negative sentence. Okay, so for example, if I wanted to say, I could have two sentences. Mm. Uh, da, 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 da. Or, or let's uh, I just thought of something. It's probably it's probably the opposite of también. Okay, también is also uh, tampoco is a little bit like you would say like also no. Okay, it's a little bit it's a bit little bit like that to to uh, understand each other. So let's say I wanted to say I haven't got a car. I haven't got a, a motorbike either. Okay, like it's this neither. So I haven't got a car. No. Tengo coche. Now, I haven't got a motorbike either. Would be tampoco tengo moto. Okay? And this tampoco, at the beginning of the sentence, it's that either. Okay? You're not either. Or also, I don't have. Okay? It's a little bit like that. Also, I don't have. Um... If I wanted to say, um, for example, I didn't buy the I didn't buy the dress, I didn't buy the shirt either. Okay, so I could say no compré el vestido, tampoco uh, compré la camisa. Okay, and we would have this tampoco here okay so also i didn't buy that okay so nice and interesting interesting expression this tampoco another good expression to do negative to, to use in um with negatives is nada nada is nothing nothing or not no not anything okay so and a normal it's an inverted quote sentence could be for example compré Compré fruta en el supermercado. I bought mercado. I bought fruit at the supermarket. It is, if instead of this, I wanted to say I didn't buy anything at the supermarket, I would need the no. And then instead of fruta, no compré nada. I didn't buy anything or nothing at the supermarket. Okay. Um, for example, I haven't got anything. If I want to say I haven't got anything, I would say no tengo nada. No tengo nada. And I have the no and I have the nada. So in Spanish, in a, in, in, in a way I'm saying I haven't got or I don't have nothing sort of thing. Okay. I don't have nothing. Just if, if that makes a little bit more sense. Okay, so nice expression as well, this nada. Another nice negative expression is nunca. 
nunca, which is never or not ever. So, for example, I have the sentence voy a la playa, voy a la playa, I go to the beach. If I want to say I don't go to the beach, sorry, I never go, go to the beach, I would say nunca voy a la playa. Okay, nunca voy a la playa. Um, I could say um, I will travel to Paris. Okay, viajaré a París. But if I wanted to say I will never travel to Paris, I would say nunca viajaré a París. Okay, so notice how this nunca gives us a little bit more play on what things we can talk about in terms of things that we do, we will do or won't do, okay, etc. Really good to remember as well with this nunca are nunca expressions with nunca plus the um, perfect. So I could say nunca he visitado, for example, Estados Unidos. Nunca he visitado Estados Unidos. I have never visited I have never visited the United States. So using the perfect with nunca really opens up again a lot of expressions for things that we haven't done. Okay, uh, nunca he jugado un partido. I have never played a match. Okay, he jugado is the perfect. So again, you know, opening up things, ideas, thing, you know, things you can talk about. And then finally, the last negative expression I'm going to use will be nadie. Nadie is nobody. Okay, nobody or no, not anyone. So <clears throat> I could, ex I could, um, I could use it in, for example, if you know, again, if I had a, a, a normal sentence, I could say, for example, be, be a Maria. Vi a María en el parque. I saw María at the park. But now I want to say that I didn't see anyone at the park. I didn't see anyone at the park. So all I need to do is say no vi a nadie. No vi a nadie <coughs> en el parque. Okay? No vi a nadie en el parque. If I wanted to say there was nobody, for example, no había nadie. There was nobody at the party. No había nadie en la fiesta. Okay, so again, no and nadie. So this nadie, generally speaking, needs the no in front. Okay, so we've got here a few, you know, quite a few interesting expressions in the negative that should expand the stuff you've got to talk about and to write about. Okay, so please, 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 I hope these years examiners, GCSE examiners, you know, stop finding time and time again, juego al fútbol. Okay, tell us, mention one thing you do, but also tell us what you don't do. Okay, because that's actually much more, it's going to be much, much more interesting. Okay, vale. Um, I'll leave this here for now and I'll see you in a couple of seconds. Hasta ahora. Bueno, y ya estamos de vuelta. We are back. So, that was the negative. Again, I could have gone on for a little while longer uh, with other expressions. There is one one other expression, actually, that I that I quite like, which is ya no, ya no, ya spelled Y-A, yeah? ya no, which is not anymore. So, again, very good to say, I don't know, for example, if you're talking about the things that you used to do in the past, like, I don't know, uh, cuando era pequeña um, hacía natación. Yeah, and then you want to say that you don't do it anymore, so you can say ya no hago natación, and then you could continue with porque, and then give a give a reason. Okay, so that ya no is basically the equivalent of no more, not any longer. Okay, and it's very very easy to do. So you've got the negative sentence no hago natación. Just put the ya in front of the no, and then it's a I don't do I don't do swimming anymore. I don't do swimming any longer. Okay. So please do use the negatives because as I said, as I've said many times, it makes things a bit more interesting.
okay and again i know i'm banging on about the interesting and the boring but it's true okay it is true so james any <clears throat> any questions yeah so we have a question which is asking specifically how would you say i don't have the time to Okay. It's negative, but I don't have the time to do whatever it happens to be. Mm -hmm. Good, and and something that many of you may want to may want to use, especially because you've become in recent uh, months probably very busy people preparing for your GCSEs. So if you want to say I don't have the time in Spanish, we would say in, we would say literally I don't have time. Okay, so no tengo tiempo. Okay, no tengo tiempo. And if you want to say I don't have the time to play whatever or to practice whatever then we would say no tengo tiempo de okay de -E, de and then the the verb in infinitive okay so no tengo tiempo de jugar <clears throat> no tengo tiempo de jugar al balón mano o no tengo tiempo de salir con mis amigos um, and again it's it's a nice it's a very nice expression Mm. And I, oh, yeah. I was going to—I was personally going to ask about the the word tampoco. Tampoco. Mm -hmm. um, for me, the way I tend to think about it, well, I'm thinking about it in a slightly different form, an equivalent word in a different language, which is basically the same. But mm -hmm. um, for me, I try to use, i tend to use it when I'm talking about two things mm -hmm. that I don't do, like whatever, or two negatives. Mm -hmm. Th not this thing and neither this next thing. So yep. that's the way I tend to think about it. Yep. And I use it a lot in like agreement terms. Mm -hmm. So somebody says, I don't like X, Y, Z, and I might say something like, yo tampoco, mm -hmm. which is so, like, neither do I, and yeah. you literally say it that way, <clears throat> neither do I. So that, yeah. I guess that's a more conversational piece. Yeah. Is that is that accurate? Yeah, that's accurate. You could say, uh, for example, yes, if someone said, uh, yo no, I don't know, uh, yo no hago uh, esgrima, for example. I, I like this sport, fencing. I don't know that I like fencing itself. I like the word esgrima. Yo no hago esgrima, and the other person could say yo tampoco. The only case to be careful with, okay, very careful with the, if someone says I don't like something, okay? If someone says in Spanish, I don't like something, and you want to reply, neither do I, you can't say yo tampoco, and you'll see why. Because in Spanish, of course, I say no me gusta, okay, or a mí no me gusta. So one person would say a mí no me gusta el fútbol, for example. And then the other person, if they wanted to agree and say nadie do I, they can't say yo tampoco, because it's not yo me gusta el fútbol, it's a mí no, or no me gusta el fútbol. So the other person will need to say a mí tampoco okay so do remember that yo tampoco uh, works almost always but do be careful with this important which is the with the gustar which you're going to be using quite a lot okay and do remember as well, as well um, the opposite of tampoco is también the also okay so instead of yo tampoco if you're going to agree with someone on the positive if someone said me gusta el fútbol uh, so you, you could say a mí también okay so do i okay or uh, yo i don't know uh, hago natación yo también okay so tampoco and también some really really nice um, words to to use especially i suppose in your speaking okay any any other questions no that's all the questions okay. there's something to celebrate we have only dropped 100 total frames today that Fantastic. is a record by one frame okay just in case anyone is unsure what that means and uh -huh. cares. Um, frames are the still images which are stringed together to make a still image into a video. Mm -hmm. And we've streamed, we've upstreamed something like a couple of million uh, frames today, and we've only dropped 100. And that's our record by one because our previous record was 101. Brilliant. So I'm very happy that I'll, that accidentally happened. I'll go and celebrate right now. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so we're going to leave this for now here. Remember, you can watch it, uh, watch us on demand again, going to our playlist where all our little videos are going to be. And all I need... Yeah, sorry. No, James. that's all. I was going to say, look okay. out for our little highlights reel on the YouTube channel as well. It's just little bits of fun that come out of these sessions. I know you can't stop giggling. So it's a uh, little, little bit of fun. fun. So we're, I'm going to put a couple of highlights in. For, I'm going to put Martha's rumbly tummy in for today. Mm. And I'm also going to put in that little that little speech I gave trying to speak some Fantastic. rather ropey Spanish. And our next revision session, la próxima revisión, la próxima sesión de revisión es el martes, el martes día 1 de mayo a las 4, de 4 a 5. 
Sí. Well, that's true for you. I've got one at four o'clock today, but you know, I take it for A-level Oh, yeah, yeah. For, for Spanish, I yeah, meant, yeah, sorry. Spanish. Um, and that one's going to be on home, town, region. And also in terms of grammar, we're going to be looking at, sorry, I've got the, the, the paper over the there, so that's why I'm looking at it. Uh, and also it's about asking questions, how you, how you do that, how you ask questions. If you are in the middle of your speaking exams, that should hopefully um, really help, for you, help you be able to um, ask questions to, to your examiner. Okay, so hasta aquí. Nos vemos el, uh, yeah, el martes. All the best, folks, Hasta and uh, 100 frames only. Fantastic. <laughs> Adios. The traditional classroom environment doesn't suit everyone. Students that don't fit this pace of learning begin to lose confidence. The problem is, the current learning model has holes in it. Luckily, the everlearner.com is here to fill those holes. With the Everlearner classroom, each student is given a chance to master each subject at their own pace. With thousands of video tutorials and tens of thousands of automated questions on the site, students can progress at their own individual pace. And because every interaction is tracked within the site, teachers can review students' progress and gain access to razor-sharp data. Teachers will have more time to engage with small groups and be better informed of where their time and support is needed. Ever learner, teachers can leave the traditional model behind and become facilitators, coaches and inspirers. There's a reason we have over 100,000 registered students. To learn more, visit our website today.